So now we're going to take a quick look at this low voltage cutoff module. So not sure how well uh, the light's going to work on that. Uh, but in any case, we have this set to 12 volts. I can tell by pressing the button, this is adjustable. And uh, what that means is if we lower the voltage to 12 volts, I'll do it by tenths of a volt. And uh, if we do 12.21, it should stay on right there. But once we get to what it sees as 12 volts, Again, you can adjust that a little bit. After a couple seconds or so, it turns off. Now, there's another button here. You can see it says one volt. That is adjustable as well. Now, what that means is, after it turns off from that uh, setting point, we have to raise it by one volt. It's just shy of that before it turns on, and it turns on pretty quick. So now, let's take a slower look at this. So, we have a couple of screw terminals right there. That's where you attach the power supply. So, pretty straightforward. It powers the board, powers the relay, and it powers the load. It provides all the power for everything. Then we got uh, the output right there. So, this is an LED module. You uh, can use alternating uh, current, alternating voltages to power this and it takes a higher voltage, and I think it makes it five volts for the LEDs. I'm not 100% sure on all that, um, but definitely it uh, takes a higher voltage and makes it lower. So it can be a wide range of voltages, uh, but it's the output there, and uh, we provide power. So when it comes to this unit, it doesn't matter whether you put one side to positive or negative. A pretty nice uh, light right there, if you're using a 12 volt uh, system. And I believe this module, um, you got to be like 9 volts or higher and it's not made for 5 volts so this LED module uh, works pretty good for that what I did was uh, instead of uh, taking wires and stuff I just took the alligator clips and I don't think they're gonna fit in there they're kind of floppy until you uh, tighten it down but uh, what I did was just open it up and sometimes it depends on uh, which uh, side is above or below. Sometimes if you turn this around, maybe it won't fit into that slot or something. But yeah, I'm just getting the alligator clip down to that soldering point uh, right there. And maybe it's touching the metal right there just for a you know temporary uh, connection right there. Of course, any actual circuit that I made, I would use you know actual wire, put wire in there. And uh, I saw a spark. Okay, there you go. And uh, so, in any case, there you go. We got it turned on. This power supply, if you bump it, it kind of uh, loses power. So that can affect things. Now, we got, uh, it's showing the uh, voltage on there. And I think you might be able to adjust this by holding both buttons down. Um, I, I believe. So I could be wrong on that. Um, but in any case, we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to come to uh, the basic property. As long as the voltage you see right there lines up really closely with the voltage that you see up there. You know, you should add like a buffer room as well. Uh, but in any case, as lines are lining up uh, really closely, you should be fine. Now, press the button and uh, it says 10 volts right there. So I think I, I might have reset it or something. But in any case, this should work with uh, 10 volts. I don't know if this light, uh, yeah, I think this light uh, might even work to like nine volts, but there we go. We got like 11 and I'm gonna go down to uh, just above 10. So as long as this doesn't get to 10 right there on the display right there, if it's off a little bit, maybe it'll say 10 when that's 11. All right, we saw that there, but I don't think it was long enough. Um, but in case, now we drop it to 10. It's definitely 10 or less. It's like a couple seconds. It uh, cuts off power. So that's the relay. Turn the relay off. And we got about 20 milliamps of current. Um, that's probably all uh, the LEDs right there, vast majority of the power being the LEDs. So if you're using a battery, um, you know, you shouldn't uh, leave this like attached forever without uh, charging the battery, especially if it's at like 10 volts, it's in a lithium minor phosphate battery. Um, but uh, any case, you know, you're not using much current right there. A battery is going to drain extremely slowly. Whereas when you have a load, it's going to take a lot longer to drain. So let's adjust, um, and it, I kind of lost the connection right there. Let's adjust that voltage where it shuts off. So we just saw it was 10, and um, I think maybe it reset when I held both buttons. Uh, but in any case, let's go to, uh, you know, 
13 volts. This LED module can easily handle 13 volts. So yeah, you gotta hit it a bunch of times, and I, I think that was for me bumping the power supply, and it didn't save it. So let's hold the button down, it should go up quickly. So don't wanna go up that high though. Um, so yeah, that's really quick. Uh, you kind of only want to hold that down if you kind of have a long ways, a lar large uh, voltage difference you want to make. So now we got 13 volts. Again, that's when it's going to shut off unless you bump the uh, power supply. So now it's 13 and it's shut off. So it shut off at 13 because I bumped the power supply, cut power. Um, but now we go up uh, 1 volt, uh, 14, and uh, that must have changed as well. So let's hold this down. And uh, so it's 2 volts right now. So actually, let's go... Uh, I don't think it'll turn on now until it's done. There we go. It went up two volts and it lit up right there. So 13 volts, it turns off. You gotta go back up to 15 before it will turn on, but it will stay on until you get back to 13. We got that two volt uh, buffer where it could be either on or off depending on what it last got put into. So we're going to uh, change that. Let's go down. We just saw we had to go up uh, two volts to get it to turn back on. Now we'll come back down to 13, so it shuts off after a couple seconds. And now we're gonna hold this button down and then change this to one so that we go back to a one volt rise. So that would be 14 volts in this case, right there. And uh, let's wait till it's done flashing right there. And uh, we go up to uh, 14. So I haven't done this in a long time and uh, there we go, that actually has to show like 14. Um, but now it'll like drift, wobble around and it won't turn off because it's nowhere near dropping like one volt. That's why you have that little buffer there. You don't want kind of a small area where a slight voltage change will turn it on and off. That's uh, very annoying. Um, you want it to be able to have a buffer zone. That's what I was talking about uh, before, where you need a significant voltage change before it either flips from off to on or on to off. Um, in a lot of circuits, that's called hysteresis. You know, if you hear of Schmidt triggers, um, that's what this basically is, a Schmidt trigger, unless you set it to uh, zero volts. So I uh, think you can do that. Let's set it down to uh, zero volts. Nope, I guess 0.1 volt. Um, so there's not gonna be an exact spot where it kinda uh, flips back and forth, but even that one point, point 0.1 volt, you know, will, will probably be enough where it acts uh, erratic. So yeah, we set it at 14, there you can see. Um, but if I bump the power supply, kind of lose power, it, it goes down. Um, so in any case, you know, I add at least a volt, but you know, it all depends on your particular situation. It's for protecting batteries. That's the uh, main thing. And um, read, you know, when you buy these modules, read all the instructions. Um, so I think I reset it by holding the two of them. And, um, you know, I, I'm pretty satisfied with this video right now. I'm not gonna go through the instructions and uh, uh, try to figure everything out again. I got the basics on there. It's uh, pretty straightforward. And, um, you know, so I'm not gonna uh, spend the extra time. I think this was uh, plenty fine. But yeah, that's all you gotta do. Wire down the power source. Wire down your load, set the voltage that you don't, usually you use a battery, you know, you, there's no reason to have it for a power supply other than testing it out. It's very easy to quickly change the voltages, but uh, those voltages are important for battery. If you have a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, 12 volts is kind of where you want to stop uh, using it. The battery will still be okay. If, if it's a 12 volt, which is actually 12.8 volts, half the time it's higher than 12.8, half the time it's lower than 12.8, if you fully charge it and discharge it. Um, but if you get below 10 volts for one of those batteries, uh, you're starting to risk damaging it. Um, if you hit 10 volts, you know, it's probably not damaged at all, but charge it right away. If it drops further than that, there's a good chance it can be uh, damaged. Um, but at uh, 12 volts, that's kind of when it's delivered most of its stored power. There's uh, not a ton of power left between 12 and 10 volts. So it's a good time to cut power if it drops to 12 volts. And then you got that two volt uh, buffer there where if it drains a little bit over time, remember this uses 20 milliamps of current, not much for a large battery, um, but it is some. So um, at that 12 volts, 
it'll probably take forever, um, almost forever, for this to drain it from 12 to 10 volts. And uh, so you got that buffer there. Be aware of that. But uh, any case, um, that's really about it. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that posted on the screen. And check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.